Jamie from Inky and Scrappy joining you today on the Crescent Creations YouTube channel with the fun shaker card. I'm altering and adding to one of my already favorite Lawn Fawn build a sets, the cupcake set. So I want to make it a shaker. I want shaker bits on the top of my cupcake. And so there's an easier way to do this. I decided to do it the hard way, of course. So I die cut that piece out from um, apricot colored cardstock, traced it with the outside of the die, and then I'm just going to hand cut a thin border around the outline here. This will help me create a shaker window. Excuse the light. It's that time of year that if I'm doing cards in the later afternoon before chores, I get that beautiful sunshine in from the window. I did end up cutting my skinniest foam strip from Crescent Creation down in half. It was challenging. I will cut out some of that footage so you don't have to suffer through me. And then because, you know, I'm on top of it, I remembered, oh, I need to put acetate under there before I can do the foam. So I will set that off to the side, let that dry, then I will fussy cut around that. I wasn't great at it. There's probably still some acetate hanging out. You really don't see it in the end product. So I wasn't overly fussy about it. I did cut my images with my brother Scan and Cut, and then I used Lawn Fawn Stitch Stack to make my background panel here. I am cheating my background panel because I had used that piece of paper for a project with my niece. I was like, well, it's close. And it was the only sheet that I had left of that pattern. And that was the pattern that I wanted. So I made it work. I did have a little bit of a corner there. So it helped me line that bottom piece up just fine. It's A, you can conserve paper. B, you can use scraps that might already have stuff cut out. Nobody's going to know unless they watch the video, obviously, that I cheated a little bit on my, you know, background piece there. And yes, I hadn't planned on doing that background until I was like, ooh, that one's kind of cute. And so I couldn't use the same one for my cupcake wrapper. Obviously, I'm going to have to cut that out of a different pattern paper. I'm using Doodlebug's design tie, I think let's party or it's party time or something like that. Paper pack, that was my color scheme for all of all of my images today. So I'm just trying to figure out placement. Now the other option you have with this one is to you know pop up that whole panel, cut the top of the cupcake out of that background panel piece and put foam behind it. And make your shaker on the back panel. I originally thought about doing it that way and then I changed my mind and decided I wanted to do it as a shaker style piece on front. Yes, it took a little bit more time and a little bit more fussy cutting, but in the end I liked the look of just having that one shaker piece on there. I am adding my little furry and bright puppies here and Instead of making them Christmas style puppies, I'm making them birthday shenanigans style puppies, you know, because it's frosting and we all have to lick the bowl, of course, and then, you know, run away with the frosting bag. It's just inevitable. This one might have had some inspiration from my niece, Faith. You will get a sneak peek of what she made with these cute little puppies and the paper pack in my upcoming, on my Inky and Scrappy channel, my upcoming Halloween of Creeping on Halloween February edition at the end of the month. So we were working ahead on some things. And so she worked on hers and I worked on mine. And let me just tell you, hers turned out adorable. And it was some inspiration for some furry and bright cards that are upcoming on my channel. So I should have colored this with my copay or my Uhuhu's before I added it to the card base. <sighs> I probably wouldn't have had to go as in depth with my 
alcohol marker coloring as I did here. And it probably would have turned out better if I'd done it prior to, or cut it even from white cardstock and didn't try to do that. I think because my images were all colored with alcohol ink markers, I felt that the die cut itself just needed a little bit more. And then, yeah, I just kept fussing with it. So it got a little darker than I probably would have liked, but it was fine. Now I didn't do it on my cupcake frosting and I think I would have liked it better if I had done it on my cupcake frosting as well. It's fine. It turned out fine, but you know, as a card maker, how you don't like something get, yeah, that's kind of how my day was going. Mm -hmm. it, it was, yeah, I stuck stuff on top of stuff and yeah. Hot mess express. That was me or that is me on the, on the, the regular. So I pulled out some of my clay bits and my seed beads from Crescent Creation Shop. I am going to fussily pick out all of the little jimmies or sprinkle clay sprinkles here that I want. So I'm pulling out the colors that are going to go with my background. So I'm pulling out that blue, the green, and then of course the yellow. Since there's no orange in there, I couldn't pull out any oranges. I thought about bringing in some of the rainbow dot clay bits because there's some orange ones in there and I thought about it, but it's a fairly small shaker element on the front of this card and I didn't want my bits to kind of get stuck in between my shaker window there. So I'm just going to bring in some yellow seed beads. If I'd have had some orange seed beads, I'd have totally used some orange seed beads on this one. I did not, so I brought in that daffodil yellow, which was fine. And then, yeah, after I had my shaker bits in there, I was like, Ugh. I just was not happy with the frosting. So I kind of went in and added a little bit of an alcohol ink, you know, yeah, <sighs> don't ask. It was just one of those days. Mm -hmm. See, even us, you know, not even semi-professional professionals have days like that too. No. Um, you know, I've been making cards for 20 ish years and I still have probably even longer than that. Cause my first stamp, I think I bought in Maryland when I was visiting my father, when I was like 10. So 30 plus years of making cards, we still have issues with this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I did put the glue adhesive behind there to make sure everything was going to stick down because yeah, you saw I had issues with my shaker window sticking to my glue because <sighs> I don't pay attention sometimes and it doesn't go well. Yeah. So I'm going to, I want to add some orange into, you know, I needed some orange frosting. And so the only thing I was hoping I had a jelly glaze pen. I did not have a jelly glaze pen in orange. I had a jelly glaze pen in it, I don't think I had, yeah, it wasn't an orange. I think I had blue and red, but no orange. So I definitely wanted to do orange because that was what color my frosting was. So I pulled out my Delusions paint pen here. I'm, it's like an acrylic paint pen, right? Or a paint pen. I don't know, but it is opaque and it sits on top of the surface. And so that is what I ended up using to draw on my frosting that is spilled out. So the little puppy was in the frosting bowl, licking it and, you know, getting orange frosting everywhere. And then the little puppy that is running away with the frosting bag might have also got a little bit of frosting all over him. So once that is dry, I am going to decide on a sentiment here. Um, I could have put it on the top on some little banner strips or some little cutout pieces, but I decided I had enough real estate and I'd kind of planned out my card to have enough real estate on the bottom there to add the sentiment in. So I'd originally thought about just doing the translation happy birthday on the bottom and then just doing the woofs up on top, which would have looked cute as well. Definitely an option for another card or another layout kind of theme and or scheme would have been cute too. 
But being that that background up on top was super busy, I kind of didn't want to go and just stamp the wolves up there. So I had to do some sentiment strips and I didn't feel it would have matched with where I was going with this one. So I just did Bow Wow Woof translation, happy birthday, all on the bottom, stamping it in my Misty on the card front directly, which makes me nervous. I do use Onyx Black Versa Fine Ink, and it usually stamps the first time one and done. It makes me a little less nervous. For the inside of my card, I am going to use the Onyx Black Ink again, and then just do an also, can I have a treat? You know. It might be your birthday, but I want the cupcake. Anyways, I'm going to add that onto my card base here. And then that should be my finished card, right? Oh, I need to bring in some glossy accents because I needed that frosting to have a little bit of a glaze to it. So I'm just adding a little bit of glossy accents to my puppies. I did go around my frosting and color that off camera with some alcohol ink. I just wasn't impressed with it. I still wasn't impressed with it. So I did add some glossy accents on top and added some glitter because glitter fixes everything. Okay. It might not fix everything, but it hides a lot of stuff. <laughs> I do like how it looks a whole lot better with that glitter. Even on the acetate, it kind of covers up my little alcohol ink lines that I wasn't impressed with on my frosting. So there is the completed card with those glossy accents. Yes, I avoided putting glossy accents all up inside of that frosting bowl. It was hard. I almost did it. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have an amazing rest of the day. Keep getting inky. Bye.